Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of Great Books in 10 Minutes. In this episode I will be analyzing Le Cid by Pierre Cornet. If you would like to watch my summary of Le Cid, you can find it on the channel or from the links in the description box and the pinned comment. Pierre Cornet's Le Cid is a masterpiece of the 17th century French theater that continues to captivate audiences today. The play explores various themes such as love, honor, duty, and the conflict between personal desires and social obligation, all of which are beautifully portrayed through the love story of young nobleman Rodrigue and his beloved Chimine. In Le Cid, Corneille's writing is exquisite and poetic, and the dialogue between the characters is brimming with emotion and intensity. The language of the play creates a vibrant and immersive world that adds to its timeless appeal. At the core of the play is the tension between Roderick's love for Shimin and his responsibility to fight and kill her father, Don Gomez, after he brutally mocks and attacks Rodrigue's father, Don Diego. The central conflict highlights the intricate interplay between personal emotions and societal norms. Furthermore, she means own struggle to balance her love for Roderick with her duty to avenge her father's death adds depth to the play's exploration of these themes. In Le Cid, after killing Shimin's father, Roderick goes to her and surrenders himself to her judgment. The young man tells his beloved that if killing him is what she desires, then she can take revenge for her father with the same weapon that Roderick used used to kill him. Roderick's surrender to Shimin emphasizes the theme of personal sacrifice, which is central to Le Cid. Roderick is willing to sacrifice his own life for Shimin's sake, just as Shimin must sacrifice her love for Roderick to avenge her father's death. In the context of 17th century Spanish aristocracy where honor was paramount, this scene reveals the extent to which both characters are willing to prioritize their sense of duty over their personal desires. Although it is generally believed that Le Cid was mostly inspired by the life of the historical figure Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, known as El Cid, a Castilian nobleman and military leader in medieval Spain, the circumstances of France in the 17th century and during the reign of King Louis XIII should not be overlooked. There is good reason to believe that in Corneille's Le Cid we can see a reflection of the political and cultural environment of France during that era. In 1637, France faced both internal and external challenges. Domestically, there were riots by Protestant population and the problem of Queen Marie de Medici, the king's mother who could not let go of her power after her son's ascension to the throne was getting out of hand. Simultaneously, France was at war with Spain and the king was trying to centralize his power by fighting on multiple fronts. Almost a year before the play was first performed, in August 1637, Six, Spanish forces were advancing on Paris and almost captured the capital. When everyone thought that all was lost, King Louis, in a surprising display of boldness, rallied his troops and drove back the invaders. Considering those circumstances, it is not uncommon for playwrights to draw inspiration from their contemporary surroundings or delicately reference current events in their work. Corneille could have taken certain aspect of the king's reign, particularly his involvement in the war with Spain and his struggle to maintain authority and power within France and woven them into the characterization of Roderick. This could be an attempt to make the play more relevant to the contemporary audiences and possibly gain favor with the king. That being said, there isn't any definitive evidence to suggest that Corneille explicitly intended to portray King Louis XIII as Roderick in Le Cid. While it is possible to draw parallels between the two figures, especially in terms of their struggles and duties, it would be speculative to assert that this was the playwright's intention without more concrete evidence. All we can say for certain is that Corneille's play, with its themes of honor, duty and patriotism, resonated with the French people and helped to promote a sense of national pride. At the end of the play, defeating Don Sanchi and sparing his life serves as a form of atonement for Roderick and allows Chimine to fulfill her duty to her father by seeking revenge. At the same time, the king commands Roderick to leave the city and join the battle against the Moors, while Chimine is 
is to mourn her father for a year. After that time, if Roderick returns victorious and Shemin still wishes to marry him, the king will grant his permission. This resolution allows both characters to fulfill their duties, Roderick serving his country and Shemin mourning her father without having to sacrifice their love for each other. One could argue that Corneille cleverly utilizes Deus Ex Machina with the king's edict at the end of the play. However, some might contend that although the king's order resolves the central conflict, it is not as abrupt or improbable as other instances of Deus Ex Machina. The king's involvement is well established earlier in the play, making his intervention in Roderick and Shemin's conflict seem like a reasonable and logical action for a ruler aiming to settle a dispute among his subjects. Nonetheless, this intervention fulfills a similar function as Duke's Ex Machina, offering an unforeseen resolution to the seemingly insurmountable problem faced by the main characters. In conclusion, Le Cid is a compelling work of literature that transcends its historical context. Even today, the play continues to be widely popular and admired, speaking to its appeal and relevance. By examining the various aspects of Le Cid, one gains a deeper appreciation for Corneille's skill as a playwright and the enduring power of his classical work. Very well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me in this literary journey. I hope you found my analysis both enjoyable and thought-provoking. I strive to offer a unique, out-of-the-box perspective on the subjects I explore, acknowledging that they may differ from mainstream interpretations. Remember, you don't have to accept everything I have shared. These are simply my personal thoughts, shaped by years of learning and passion for literature. If you would like to support the channel, consider becoming a member liking, sharing, and subscribing, your engagement helps keep this literary conversation alive. Until next time, keep reading and exploring the world of words.